Third, uh, Queen 8 suited here. Uh, you want to check Nash always, and it's going to tell you you can shove here for, you know, plus TV shove. And also, you know, you look at his stats. He's not really, he's 3-betting quite a bit. We can't min-raise call. Um, I mean, we probably can, but it's not that great. of It's a very thin spot. Um, we could limp here and maybe call a non-all-in uh, ISO, but we can't call a jam. And then we're playing defense instead of offense. So it's a spot where I would rather just ISO jam here. I mean, rather, rather open jam here. Makes life a lot easier. It's plus EV jam. Easy fold for us here. Um, this is once again a spot ace jack offsuit versus a lot of regs. This is in my limp trapping range. Um, you know, versus some players who are isolating quite a bit. I am also limp trapping hands like this. So I'm probably going to limp here. Um, versus this guy, though, it might be a little better to min raise just because, once again, his VPIP is on the low side, and he's not necessarily flatting all that wide, but he's 3-betting pretty wide. So if he flats here, I'm not that, you know, happy about it. Um, but Ace-Jack plays okay post-flop, and, and plus, you know, he, if he's going to be 3-betting me 33% of the time here, uh, I can e easily get it in. But also, you know, you look at his isolation stats, and, you know, they're not that bad either. So I'd probably decide to limp here instead of min raise. And we do, and it checks back, and that always really stinks, right? Um, this is a spot where I'm definitely going to be limp c-betting here. Sometimes I'm just checking back on drier boards or boards where I can't really rep much because I have ace high, and I'm trying to get the showdown here. But here I'm open-ended, um, backdoor flush draw, so I'm going to bet here. Perfect. And 11 big blinds here, he decides to min-raise. Once again, if you look at his stats here, you know, he's min-raising... <laughs> Look at one out of 87 times. Okay, so he has value here. There's no doubt about that. But I'm pretty happy about getting my hand in ace queen offsuit here. And we jam, and he calls. And unfortunately, queen 10. So, you know, based, and he hits 10 on the river, which is unfortunate. As you see here, you know, his ra his stats suggest that he's never raising. And you'd be like, oh, 1 out of 87, that's probably pocket aces, pocket kings. Not necessarily. In theory, potentially. But as you see, he min raise queen 10. So you don't want to over adjust by maybe hero folding a hand like ace, jack, or raise 10 because of these stats. You really want to still get it in here um, because of things like this. Recreationals tend to change once in a while. They do some weird stuff once in a blue moon. So you really want to be careful about over adjusting versus a guy like this. Um, and he ends up winning that game, unfortunately. Uh, let's jump into the next game. Alright, guys. Next game here. Um, and same guy, obviously. So, let's see. 2-8 offsuit out of position. Um, you know, obviously, we're going to be folding here to a min-raise. Checking back to a limp. Pocket tens here. Uh, once again, he's flatting very wide. He's 3-betting quite a bit. Yes, he is isolating, but based off my HUD stats, I think that, you know, min-raising is going to be slightly better here. Perfect. King 7-2. This is a spot where I see a lot of players check back readless. I'm not necessarily crazy about people checking back readless here. I think by C-betting, you have a better idea of where you are in the hand, in my opinion. Um, and then if you check back, you're kind of in no man's land because he could be repping some air and he could be repping some King X, but chances are you have to call down. So I think it's a spot where I'd rather be min raising, uh, C-betting in this spot. He decides to dunk out, so he changes everything here. Um, definitely can't fold here. You want to put him on a range here. I don't think that a lot of players are going to be um, donking out here with King X, even though I've seen it happen before. I mean, a reg would never donk out with King X, in my opinion here, unless he was playing versus a guy who was checking back a ton. So it's a spot where I think that his range probably consists of more air than anything else. And even if he did have some King X here, I'm never raising in this spot because I'm either way ahead or way behind. So raising here is kind of pointless, right? Unless you have some serious reads that he's only doing this with like middle pair and stuff like that, which is never going to happen um, all that often. So a spot where I'm flat calling here and I'm reevaluating turn. Three hits on the turn, not necessarily a bad card from the barrel if he was bluffing. Um, you know, some hard draws come out there, some straight draws do come out there as well. Let's see what he decides to do. 
he checks back here. And this is interesting here, because if he had a king, you would suggest he would probably bet there, right? It would make a lot of sense for him to continue on betting. It doesn't really make much sense for him to check back, even though some players do that. But I think versus recreationals here, this is a really good spot to bet here for value. Maybe get called by some um, 7x, some 2x, maybe some weird, you know, gut shot straight draw. Um, but the great thing about this is you can bet the turn with all intentions of checking back rivers. You kind of handcuff him, right? Definitely if he does have some king x here. So I just had yeah, decided to bet really small and try to get some value from some of his lower pairs or some weird floats like uh, maybe like a queen high or something random, right? Some of his air. Unfortunately, he folds. But I had all intentions of checking back most rivers. I might thin value bet river as well, um, depending on what the river card was. But uh, I think versus recreationals, you can definitely handcuff him by doing things like that. Easy check back here. He checks back here, which is fine. Ace hits on the turn. Um, he doesn't really have that much ace-x in his range, in my opinion. Uh, yes, he's limp trapping once in a while. I've seen him check back hands like uh, limp hands like ace three before. Um, so there are some ace-x in his range. But also, we've seen him check back some air. We've seen him check back some third pairs. We've seen him check back quite a lot. So I think that even though there is a small percentage of ace-x in his range, it's more likely that he has a lot of air in his range. So I decided to bet here. Um, I'm not sure if I like betting here. I think that maybe checking back and letting him rep the ace-x is probably a little bit better. Um, yeah, I think that's probably a mistake on my part here. Even though I do think that I am getting value from some 7x and some 3x here, which is actually probably why I did that. But I think it's super close. He calls. Two hits on the river. Now... I can definitely bet here if I wanted to, and I do think that betting here is probably the right play, but for some reason in game, I decided to check here, um, and I'm not necessarily sure why, because by betting here, I'm probably getting value from some 7x and some 3x here, I'm never getting called by worse, but at the same time, if he called turn, it's more likely that he has a 7 or a 3 than maybe some sort of missed draw because he would probably live C by some sort of draw. But once again, this guy's a recreational and he's done some pretty weird stuff um, in the small blind and limp pots. Next, it's a spot where if I decide to check back on the turn, he could rep ace x and I can you maybe get two streets of value from his bluffs here. Um, the only reason I would check back here is if I thought he was floating me and he has a lot of missed draws in his range, and he would bet here. So if I had reads that he was checking back a lot of draws in his range, missed draws in his range, then this is probably a pretty good play. But without that read, which I didn't necessarily have all that, you know, much, uh, you know, reads on that on that spot, maybe one or two times, not a big sample size. So I, I this is a mistake. I should probably bet two streets here. But in return, I decided to limp uh, checks call, and as you see. Um, he was had he had a missed straight draw, <laughs> gut shot. So this is a spot where I would say 90% of players should be, you know, would definitely be limp c betting this type of board texture. And this is something that I need to write down. This is a read that is very important for me to jot down, so I understand that this play actually in the future might not be that bad in the long run. But I also think that it probably would have played out the same exact way if I would have checked back the turn. He probably would have tried to rip the ace x. Knowing that, knowing that you know he probably couldn't in general, or or not being that good at all. So who who knows how well he's thinking, right? But at the spot where I think that he would bet turn and probably bet river as well. So I might have been able to get uh you know max equity by checking back turn. So just a slight mistake there, but you know not the end of the world. Every poker player makes mistakes. Uh, don't harp on it too much. Just understand why what you did wrong, why it was wrong, and then you learn from the experience, right? Next here, as you see, this is a hand that usually in my min-raising range, min-raise folding range, um, but I decided to limp here. I'm exploiting this guy by limp-stabbing more and only min-raising a lot of value because he's not necessarily playing all that well. And stab, and he calls, and I'm just giving up here, obviously. And he has queen four. Um, not a bad call, backdoor flush draw, backdoor straight draw, one over, so, you know, pretty good call there by him. Uh, just a really horrible turn for me to barrel. Check back here. Helium C bets. Um, I could, yeah, this is probably a good fold there. Yeah, I mean, backdoor flush draw, you can get carried away with stuff like that, but it's a spot where he's, you know, 
betting turns when he bets flop, so I'm not going to be able to realize my equity all that easily. Once again, exploiting this guy, right? Min raising, because he's not really getting the hint that I'm only min raising with value. So versus these kind of recreationals, you don't want to get out of control and just assume that they all know what they're doing and that they're all pros, right? You want to think that way versus regs, not rex. So it's a spot where I'm exploiting this guy. And, and you know, based off the HUD that you guys might have, the coffee HUD, or just from paying attention, you might be able to realize that you can exploit these type of players. And sometimes I have you know, people asking me, well, you know, should, should I just wait for a hand to, to be the guy and, you know, to be the recreational? And I think, you know, that's kind of a very dull way of, 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 you know, approaching things. I think that if you can pay attention to the game and realize spots where you can exploit your opponent, recreationals, you know, or regs, you know, it goes a long way. So you don't always have to be balanced, but you can definitely, you know, get better and realize how you can exploit a player. And at the end of the day, that's probably the best tool you can have in your arsenal. Any jams here. And we flat, obviously. And as you see, A6. So, you know, versus a guy who's only min-raising value, A6 is probably a flat, you know, versus that type of opponent over a big sample. Now, read list, A6 is always a jam at these effective stacks to a min-raise. But I'm clearly only min-raising with value, right? So this guy should not be 3-bed three, three bed jamming all that wide versus me, but he still is. So as you see, exploiting this guy to the fullest until he adjusts. And when he adjusts, then I'll adjust. If he adjusts by, you know, flatting more and, and maybe folding out a little bit wider, then I'll start min-raising with a balanced range. Start throwing some air in there as well, so I'm a little more balanced. And then if he's folding, continuing the folding, then I'm exploiting him in that way because he's folding too wide. So these things are very, very important, and you must pay attention to all these things. Alright, so first of all, we're going to be talking about the great deals on coaching. And everything I see around town is, you know, an hour for this much for an hour session here and there. But why does it have to be a full hour, right? Sometimes you have a problem with a reg that won't leave you alone. Um, sometimes you have a problem with just plugging a leak or just understanding a concept or anything that has to do with poker that doesn't necessarily take an hour. Um, sometimes it takes a half an hour. Sometimes it takes 45 minutes. So what I did was I broke it up here for the guys who don't really want to spend all that money on a full hour, but just have a few questions. Just have a guy that want to go real quick to kind of figure out what he's doing against me. Is he exploiting you? Um, are there ways you could exploit him? Uh, those things go a long way. So as you see here, my rates per hour, $70 an hour. That's the original pricing. Um, obviously, you save, save some money when you do package deals. Uh, next is going to be 45 minutes uh, for $50, uh, $50, which is going to be you know a percentage of the, the hourly. And then last but not least, for half the time, half the money. And I do think that really goes a long way. So you know, for the guy who can't really afford the full hour but can afford half an hour, you know, and you have this guy who's completely you know ruining your grind by sitting you all the time. This is perfect for you guys, so I uh, just wanted to help you guys out, and um, hope this helps quite a bit. Next, we're going to be talking about the package deal, which I talked about before, and my hourly is $70 per hour, but if you buy packages, you obviously save some money on the back end. Now, the problem is, with poker, you know, a lot of the time, you need to have a lot of the money up front, because it's one of those situations where it's just, you know, over the internet, a lot of weird things do happen once in a while, and, and it's hard to trust people sometimes, but it's a situation where I'm willing to trust you guys a little bit more here, and I'm willing to give you guys a payment plan when talking about these package deals, right? Usually breaking up to three different payments, um, sometimes four, but for the guys who can't necessarily buy everything in bulk, here's a chance to get a little bit better, pay in increments, maybe win some money, and then use your funds to pay me, you know, with the money you just won. So maybe at the end of the whole entire 10-hour package, you might not even pay anything at all because you learned something and you paid and you did it for free. So, I mean, that really goes a long way. I, I don't really see a lot of people doing this, so I think this might help a lot of people out who can't necessarily, you know, throw out hundreds of dollars just for this whole large package. Um, not only that, I think it'll keep people motivated when they have this, um, you know, payment plan. So they want to win. They want to do better, you know, after the first two, three sessions because they know that there's a chance that they can pay for this whole entire thing without even, you know, spending too much out of pocket, which really goes a long way. Um, you know, if you're interested in this deal, I want you to contact me on Skype. 
uh, P Bogues 1114. I'm on a lot. If I'm not on my laptop, I am on my phone. So just contact me. I will get back to you as soon as possible if you're interested. Um, and yeah, that's about it. So why don't we move on to the next promotion? Next, we're going to be talking about ways to win free coaching. And as I told you before, social media is going to be my new best friend. So if you want, follow me on Snapchat. For all you guys who don't know what Snapchat is, it's basically you take a 10-minute video or like a three-second picture, um, and then you just send it to your friends, uh, you know, back and forth, something like that. What I'll do with that is I'll have you guys potentially, you know, send me a picture of you guys grinding. And the 20th person to send me a picture of them grinding you know, gets free coaching, um, something like that, or, you know, some sort of weekend thing, uh, whoever is doing the most exciting thing on the weekend, you know, send me a Snapchat, and you get free coaching, like, really fun things like that, it, and it can really make these things interesting, um, and doesn't really make you guys think too much, or, or work too hard for it, because it could be just, you know, a wild weekend, which is, you know, always a lot of fun. Next, we're going to talk about Twitter. Um, a lot of you guys are already follow me on Twitter, um, from my last video here, but, the reason I'm putting Twitter up again is because sometimes I'm going to make it complicated for you guys to just, you know, download one thing. Sometimes I'm going to put stuff on Twitter about Snapchat. And sometimes I'm going to be putting things on Instagram about Twitter. And then, you know, uh, vice versa, back and forth. So you really need to follow me on all three things to, you know, be able to obtain the most amount of free coaching. And I'm going to be giving away a lot of free coaching. I really am. This is the time for you guys to kind of, you know, dig in here because um, I have motivation to kind of get my name out there. And I'm giving away a bunch of free stuff to do so, right? So, you know, Snapchat, Twitter, Instagram, pbogues1114 on Twitter and Instagram, uh, just regular pbogues on Snapchat. So it's going to be fun. Um, you know, once a lot of people start, you know, following me and getting really into this, I'll give away a free 10 hour package as well. Um, and that will be really cool. So, uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys enjoyed the advertisement. Um, you know, let's get this ball rolling. The more guys that join, the more stuff I'm going to be giving away. So let's get this show on the road here. Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Talk to you later. And uh, good luck grinding, boys.